Morning all. All right. So uh, that's what take sixteen or something like that. Anyways, I I just it has to be in one take. If I if I make a mistake or if I mess things up, I'm like, all right, I got to start over. So I want to start off today talking about goaltenders, and I want to get through this take this time. I've got seventeen goaltenders on the board. I could have I could have had the four foot by two foot board and put like fifty goalies on the board. The reality is when you're talking about who the best goaltender in the NHL is, there's some subjectivity to it. Um, I've got advanced stats on the board. I've got a couple of traditional stats there as well. But there's always going to be that I believe this goalie is the best because, and he's being held by the defense in front of him, the team doesn't play a style that allows a goaltender to have good stats. So there's there's going to be that argument. That's part of the reason why some of these names are on the board, right? Uh, Carter Hart, Jacob Markstrom, Jordan Biddington, to some extent Thatcher Demko as well. Uh, they end up on the board because you could make the argument John Gibson is an argument for that as well, right? Um, and, and Gibson's numbers, not great. And yet, if he were on the trade block tomorrow, there would be a lot of teams making that call. So, who the best goalie in the league is, there's going to be some subjectivity. Um, I've got wins on the board. Yes, wins are a team metric. I've talked about that when I talk about goaltenders too. But again, when you're looking at over three years, I felt that wins and save percentage were big, as well as goals saved above expected per 60 minutes. So if you look over a full season, you might have a goaltender that has 40 goals saved above expected and the other one has 15. You say, wow, that goaltender's better. But then you look at the sample size and in reality, the guy with the 15 goals saved above expected has slightly better numbers than the one with 40. So I wanted to cut through that a little bit and, and look over the last three years. And so where we're starting is with Linus Olmark because he had the best number uh, he's he's going to win the Vezina uh, when the when the award show is on uh, next week. Uh, he's 29 years of age and his goal saved above expected per 60 minutes this year a ridiculous 883, the highest of that number of the last three seasons. So I don't expect Olmark to keep that up. I don't, and I don't think the Bruins do either. I think they would hope he would have a season like that again, but really it was just one of those years where everything was going his way. Last year with Boston, 0.147, and the year before in Buffalo, negative 0.193. So Olmark had a ridiculously good year. I don't think he goes back down to 0.147, but I think maybe a 0.4 might be more realistic for him. And so you're going to see goals against go up. You'd probably see his wins numbers go down. He's had 75 wins over the last three seasons, a 926 save percentage, which again is helped by that ridiculous save percentage this year. And so I would expect that number to come down as well. Right beneath him, Ilya Sorokin. So Sorokin may very well be the the best at his position uh, next season. I wouldn't be surprised to see him win a Vezina. This year, 0.647, goal saved above expected per 60 minutes played. Uh, last year was 0.250, and the year before it was 0.118. So he had an absolutely phenomenal year. He was just overshadowed by Olmark. Otherwise, Sorokin should probably win the Vezina in his place. Sorokin's only 27 as well, and he's a year out from unrestricted free agency status. So there's a lot of reasons to think Sorokin's going to have a really strong year. He also has 70 wins the last three seasons and a 924 safe percentage. So if we look at the save percentage over the last three years, 926, 924, 920, 923, uh, 920. Yeah, that 924 is the second best on the board. And so if if you want to look at it from that perspective, you can point at that number for Sorokin and say over the last three years, it shows he's the best goalie. Connor Hellebuck, 30 years of age now, looking to be traded. At least that's the rumor, right? 0.489 goals saved above expected per 60 minutes. Very good number. The best he's had over these three years. 0.257 last year and the year before, 0.445. Those numbers are strong all the way across the board. So while Olmark has gotten better to a ridiculous degree, Sorokin's numbers have come up. Really, the numbers with Hellebuck are a little more consistent. 90 wins over that period and a 915 save percentage. So save percentage is a little bit lower. But as has been said, there are various factors when it comes to save percentage the quality of shots you face might be a little bit higher so your save percentage might be a little bit lower that kind of thing then there's Jake Ottinger now I feel bad for Jake because I feel like these playoffs there was a little bit too high of an expectation because of what happened the previous playoff against Calgary so this year his numbers kind of show that he's only 24 so he's still coming into his own 0.194 goals uh, saved above expected per 60 minutes last year was 0.0031 
The year before was a negative, negative 0 0.018. So his numbers have gotten better, but he's not in that category. Ottinger is not. I, I would even go as far as to say, I don't know if Ottinger right now is a top 10 goalie in the NHL. And I've got an Ottinger jersey. Love Ottinger. I think he's a great young goalie. I don't think he's top 10 yet. But that's the thing, the yet. That .194 is still better than what Olmark had in 2021-2022. And we saw the year he just finished having. So Ottinger who has 78 wins and a 916 save percentage. So his save percentage over the three years is better than Hellebuck's. But if you look at the goal saved above expected, he's below Hellebuck. So uh, that's where that's where the arguments can come in. And then you got UC Saros. Lots of people like UC Saros and think he's the best goalie in the league. His numbers have been pretty consistent too. This year, a .735 is his goal saved above expected per 60 minutes. So if not Sorokin, then Saros probably should have been this, the, the Vesna winner. Uh, outside of Olmark, 0.316 was his number last year, 0.386 the number the year before. So 0.316 being the low point, that's still a pretty good number when you look at goals saved above expected. He is 28 years of age. He's had 92 wins the last three seasons and a 920 save percentage. So Saros absolutely amongst the best goaltenders in the National Hockey League. And, you know, when I do my list up, I will say... You know, we went to post on my holiday, so we'll do that list up probably the second week of August. Yeah, Saros would definitely be top five. But then you got Vasilevsky. His number this year, 0 0.422, which is lower than Olmark, Sorokin, Hellebuck, Saros. But the previous season, it was 0.453, and the year before that, it was 0.433. So this year's 0 0.422, which is still good, is the lowest number of the last three years. So Vasilevsky, who's only 28, Probably going to bounce back and have a better year next year, which could be bad news for the rest of the NHL. 104 wins over the last three years and a 918 save percentage. So Vasilevsky's numbers are still very, very good. Uh, Igor Shosturkin, his numbers did come down to a more human number this year. 0.483 was the number this year for goals saved above expected per 60 minutes. Last year was 0.666. Yep, Iron Maiden fan there. Uh, the year before, 0 .095, Iron Maiden was a band in the 80s that sang metal music. Well, it's more rock by today's standards, but we called it metal. Uh, 27, there's people right now typing, but Iron Maiden is metal, I know. 27 years of age for Shesterkin, stupid hockey guy talking about metal, um, which I did on the Entertainment Guy. Uh, but 89 wins for Shesterkin over the last three years and a 923 save percentage. So Shesterkin's down-to-earth year is still a number that's almost the same as Hellebuck's, better than Vasilevsky's, and is still one of the better numbers on the board. We just knew Shesterkin wasn't going to repeat what he did last season because last season was ridiculous. Same as we don't expect Olmark to repeat the feats he had this year next season. Darcy Kemper, his numbers have been good. He's 33 years of age. Uh, this year for Washington, a positive 0.164 was his number. The previous year, 0.387. And the year before that, it was actually a negative, negative 0.008. Uh, 69 wins over those three seasons and a 914 save percentage. Kemper's a very good goaltender. Might be top 10 amongst goaltenders in the NHL. Not really in the conversation, though, if you're getting into the best goalies in the league. And I would say the same with Georgiev, although the, the switch to Colorado really seemed to help him. This year, a positive. And the first time he's been in the positive with goals saved above expected, 0.355. Now, for Ranger fans that were very negative about uh, Georgiev, it could be because he wasn't as good with the Rangers. Negative 0.234 last year, negative 0.453 the year before. So that's that's not great, right? 63 wins over the three years because two of those years he's been a backup. A 911 save percentage is okay, and he is 27 years of age. So for Colorado, you got to think probably another five, six years he could be a starter there. Um, because we're seeing with Hellebuck, he's 30. He's nowhere near done as a starter. Kemper's still a starter. He's 33. So with goaltenders, you don't have to worry about that drop-off as early as you do with skaters, right? Skaters, usually once you get into the early 30s, the stats really drop off. And then you get to John Gibson, and there's really divided opinions on John Gibson. I think he's a good goaltender. I'm just waiting till all the shouting that he's not dies down. But this year, his numbers weren't good. Negative 0.230. The year before, negative 0.265, and the year before that, negative, two point, negative 0.219. But a GM's going to look at this and go, yeah, but he's, he's 29, he's in his prime, and he's playing in Anaheim. His numbers are bad. I said this with Arizona yesterday, and I'll say it here too. 
I, I do think we overestimate the bounce back that a player would have on another team. Do you look at bad stats on a, on a bad team and go, well, yeah, he'll get a lot better on another team. That doesn't always happen. Uh, so for Gibson, 41 wins over the last three years because he's in Anaheim. They don't win very many games. And a 902 save percentage. So it is interesting to me that with Gibson, we talk a lot about how, you know, it's a shame he's in Anaheim and, you know, what could he do with a contender? I'd be interested to see if those numbers turn around if he was to get traded. So let's say Pittsburgh gets John Gibson. They go, ah, oh, Jari's too rich for our blood. We'll just go out and get Gibson. And then Jari ends up with the Anaheim Ducks, whatever ends up happening. But it doesn't necessarily mean Gibson's numbers get better if he was to, to move. But I would be interested to see if they did. Uh, then we get over to this side of the board. I have to mention Bobrovsky. I really do. And Bobrovsky's numbers this year weren't bad. So while we talked during the start of the playoffs, especially about whether or not Florida had faith in Bobrovsky, if you look at the goal saved above expected, he was a positive, 0.131. Now, is that a $10 million contract number? No, but it's still not bad. Uh, 0.456 the year before, a negative the year before that, 0.268 in the negative the year before, which I think probably colors a lot of opinions. Now, with Bobrovsky, he is 34, so how much longer he's going to be able to play is an issue. 82 wins for him and a 907 save percentage. So the save percentage a little bit, you know, towards the mean, a little bit towards the average. I don't think Bobrovsky is one of the best goalies in the league right now. However, uh, he did make it to the Stanley Cup final where he lost against a goaltender that's not on the board. And I'm, I can't, I cannot put Aiden Hill on the board without needing to put about 20 other guys on the board. Great run, Stanley Cup win. Absolutely. Is he in the conversation for the best goalie in the NHL? No. Uh, I, I don't I don't see it that way. Uh, Gustafson. Gustafson had a ridiculous year for Minnesota. Can he follow it up? So his number this year was 0. .628. So it's less than Sorokin, less than Saros, less than Olmark, but it's still very good. The year before in Ottawa, negative 0. .367. What's interesting is Ottawa fans have been very clear that he wasn't good last year and he's not going to be able to keep this up. But the year before that, small sample size, he was a positive for Ottawa at 0 .140. He's only 25 years of age. He's won 32 games over the last three years and a 920 safe percentage overall. So Gustafson's one of those interesting ones where I don't think the .628 is something he's going to be able to keep up because Shesterkin didn't keep up a number above .6. Uh, Olmark's got the one above .6. Vasilevsky's never been at .6. So I would expect Gustafson to come back to a more normal number of about a .4 or .42. But even with that, He's still a very good goaltender. Carter Hart. Carter Hart takes a lot of criticism, but he is a positive here. 0.195 this year, and he's only 24 years of age. And if you factor in that his his numbers as a penalty killing goalie were awful, uh, honestly, his goal saved above expected probably comes up if he's on a team with a better penalty kill. Last year, negative 0.152. The year before, negative 0.754. And the 2021 season was so abysmal that I think that's part of what colors the opinions of others when it comes to Carter Hart. That that was a year where, you know, Philadelphia went from a playoff team to a non-playoff team, spectacularly so. And a lot of it had to do with Hart not playing well. He's played better since. I think he had a decent year. We can make the argument of whether or not he's a top 10 goalie in the league, as we will in about six weeks' time. But uh, I don't have Hart in this category yet. Because I think I think Olmark, Sorokin, Hellebuck, Saros, Vasilevsky, Shesterkin, I, I can't I can't put Ottinger in that category. But those six out of those seven, I think are probably your top six goalies in the league. Now, Hart's numbers, 44 wins and a 900 save percentage over the last three years. So again, I understand why people don't don't look at number Hart's numbers or Philadelphia's record and say, well, Hart's clearly a very good goaltender, but I think he is. Now, Markstrom, on the other hand, Markstrom's 33 years of age, and he's coming off of a down year. Negative 0 .055. So his overall numbers dropped. The year before, he was a .175 in the positive. He was a negative .224 the year before that. So that's two years in the negative out of three. And the year in the positive, the .175, he had a great first half of the season. He wasn't that great in the second half. You always have to watch you're not overplaying Markstrom. So I don't have Markstrom in the same category as the best in the league, but can he bounce back and become a top 10 goalie? Maybe. Freddie Anderson is an interesting one too. He actually had a negative year this year, negative .106. So that's a bit of an ouch and kind of a surprise to me in the Carolina really good defensive numbers. The year before that, a .543. He was fantastic. The year before that, negative .203. So two of the last three years, he's had a negative and he's 33 years of age 
and he's going to be an unrestricted free agent unless he re-signs in Carolina. 69 wins over the last three years and a 9-11 save percentage. Uh, for Markstrom, I don't think I mentioned 82 wins and a 907 save percentage over three years. So Anderson's numbers are good, not necessarily great. I don't think he ends up in the conversation as one of the best goalies in the league, but he can be very good. Then there's Jordan Bennington, and there's always that big divided opinion on Jordan Bennington, right? He's in the negative two of the three years. Uh, this year, he's a negative 0.157. The year before that, negative 0.229. The year before that, he was a positive just barely at 0 0.002. Uh, he's 29 years of age. He's got 63 wins over the last three years and a 901 save percentage. And Blues fans everywhere are yelling at the computer, might have been yelling at their TV or their phone, whatever they're watching this on, since this started, because it's negatives next to Bennington, they'll say that's on the defense. The thing is, saved above expected or below expected, those are the expected saves. So again, there's always that human quality to the advanced stats as well. Advanced stats from one site to another may very well differ. Uh, it is something to definitely be taken with a grain of salt. But I would have uh, a little bit of nervous energy if I was a GM uh, talking to St. Louis about Bennington because of those negatives with the advanced stats and the fact he only has a 901 save percentage over the last three years. So... And I know they're not trading Bennington. I'm just saying that from a value perspective, I, I don't know if that $6 million contract, even if St. Louis said, we're making him available, I don't know how much you'd get back for Bennington right now. And then there's Thatcher Demko. Was Demko really good last year? Well, overall, no. But, by, but after Boudreaux took over, he was better. This year, he was terrible to start the year. But at the end of the year, he looked like Demko again. So he had a negative 0 0.182 this year. The year before, a positive 0 0.170, and the year before that, a positive 0.196. So with Demko, who's 27, Bennington's 29, uh, Demko at 27, still in his prime, uh, 63 wins over the last three years and a 912 save percentage. I, as a Canuck fan, will tell you that defense has not always been very good. Therefore, the 912 save percentage is impressive. It's better than Anderson's 911. So the, the reality is that Demko could have a big year this year. The Canucks, if they're going to make the playoffs, probably need Demko to have a really big year. They need Demko to get more into the 422, 489, that kind of area where he's making these saves that we don't know how he's making, which he's done, but he hasn't done it consistently over a full 82-game season. That's the one thing with Demko. He can be very, very good, but it's, it is inconsistent. The interesting thing is if you look at Demko's numbers and you compare them to Markstrom's, it makes a lot of sense that Vancouver let Markstrom go to market and signing Calgary rather than retaining him. And, you know, even if they'd found a way for Seattle not to take one of their two goaltenders in the expansion draft, because they would have had to expose either Demko or Markstrom. That's why Markstrom was let go. But the reality is Demko's numbers, I think, have been a little bit better overall uh, than Markstrom's. But we shall see this year whether or not that remains the case. So the big question I have is, who do you think's the best goaltender in the National Hockey League? And which of the goalies that had a down year is going to jump right up and which one that had a really good year do you think is going to fall back to earth and again my pick for falling back to earth would be Olmark my pick for a, a bounce back year uh I mean if I took Gibson that would seem a little bit odd because again Gibson's numbers have been poor for the last three years I would say I I'll say Vasilevsky's numbers get slightly better next year I'll, I'll throw that in I'll say they get slightly better and, and maybe Ottinger finally takes that jump and ends up at the point four range, which we know he can do. It's just that matter of consistency. It's been consistency, which is at age 24, not out of the realm of uh, the usual way things go with a goaltender. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. I finally got through this video. I finally did it. It only took an hour and a half. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.